Rogue Genesia is an unsuspecting game that on the surface and on my first few times playing it, it didn't really capture me, but after playing more, there's depth here and plenty of progression to boot. It's a simpler game at the moment than others I've spoken about, but it's far earlier in its early access period than the other games. One more important thing to mention is that it seems that this game has a big emphasis on mods. I haven't tried any out, but based on what I've seen from the updates coming out for it, it's got a pretty big emphasis on allowing players to mod the game, but it's got potential in the vanilla version, so let's just get into it. So when it comes to the game modes and the ultimate goals, Rogue Genesia has two game modes. There's a staged mode, which seems to be the main mode where the progression is. You enter a map with a ton of challenges, chests, and question marks ahead of you, and you need to fight your way through all of it until you get to the boss. You kill the boss and you move on to the next map where you'll do the same thing and then you beat the game. So only two full stages in the game at the moment. Then of course, there is an endless mode if you want to play that too. But I think this staged mode should be adapted by more of the games in this genre simply because I think it's hard to perfect the pace in a game with only an endless mode or a 30 minute stage. Having stages lasting a couple minutes each gives you everything you want out of a survivor roguelike while also allowing you to make choices about where you want to go next. This staged concept also allows for different sorts of progression to be added just to go off on a quick Quick tangent, imagine a game with only a 30 minute stage to beat. You'll build progression systems and achievements around that design choice, but you'll be limited by that choice as well. A game like Rogue Genesia gives you quicker stages and a macro goal of completing an entire map, allowing you to inject different achievements and progression systems for the game in and out of the run, simply by chopping up the gameplay a little bit and adding variety in how the game is played. I think that's something worth thinking about, especially because it works pretty well here. When it comes to the movement and aim mechanics, like many before it, you can aim, but not all abilities are aimed. In fact, most I've tried aren't aimed and some are aimed based on the direction you're facing. You'll also have access to a dash and from what I've played, the importance of the dash is entirely dependent on how powerful you are, which makes sense. But one of the runs I played for this video, the dash saved my life, but another, it wasn't really necessary. So keep that in mind. Overall, I'm not sure how I feel about movement mechanics in this game. They're not super satisfying. And I think a lot of the other games I've mentioned get the momentum and fluidity of movement more right than it's done here. It could be due to the 2D nature or general movement speed, but it just doesn't feel super great to move around. It's not terrible and the dash helps with feeling quick, but overall, all, it's just not the best. The aimed abilities also feel underwhelming, but I think that's due to multiple factors we'll get into later. When it comes to the combat and sound design, combat in this game is such a mixed bag for me. On one hand, the sound design effects and general satisfaction isn't super great, but on the other hand, it's incredibly fun when you get to the late game because shit just starts popping off and you do feel powerful. And in the end, I found myself having fun. I think this is mainly due to the very well done upgrade system within a run. Building is very purposeful in this game and the game gives you clear indications that your build is working. If you go for attack speed and projectile speed, you'll see it. Same with a tanky build or anything else. I can't tell you how much this adds to combat because I feel like the power spike would feel really underwhelming if the upgrade system wasn't as good as it is. The dash and aiming mechanics don't do an exceptional amount to add to combat, but they're nice enough additions to keep the combat engaging, which again is crucial because for the first little bit, the power spike doesn't feel great, again, thanks to average effects and sound design. To elaborate on that a little bit before we move on, aiming abilities generally need to make you feel like you're doing something that's making a difference, and while the end result might show that you are in this game, the animations and sound design don't back that up. When it comes to the progression and replayability, this game has 175 achievements, all of which unlock something, another ability, weapon, etc. And I'm at the point in my own playtime where I'm unlocking multiple of these per run, and it's incredibly satisfying. I build towards attack speed and I get rewarded with an achievement with a related reward. And it's good to be doubly rewarded on my commitment to my build. You also have the soul shop where you'll spend currency on multiple increasing tiers of general upgrades. These are designed to keep you powering through the game as it gets harder and harder and you'll unlock more tiers of upgrades as you beat more tiers of world. This progression is really satisfying and one of the core motivators to play and is the main macro progression on top of achievements. Progression, while simple in a sense, is a strong point for this game. When it comes to the negatives, I touched on the negatives of combat, but to reiterate, generally it just isn't super satisfying until you get much later into the run. But even then, the sound design and effects don't keep up either, which is a shame considering how much the pace increases towards the end game. The only satisfying sound effect in this game that I can think of is the XP pickup. Boss fights are not nearly as dynamic as other games in this genre. The ones that I have played have been quite boring and with lackluster bullet hell dynamics as well. The fight is just so much easier than you would expect it to be. Some UI elements are pretty iffy and aren't quite scaled right or just aren't intuitive like the achievement section. The general art design of the game could turn people off. It does kind of turn me off as well. What's worse about the art design is how the game's elements kind of merge together visually. Some distinction between props, enemies, projectiles, etc. would serve the game really well. In fact, from the gameplay you've seen, you might notice just how blurry some of the effects are and that doesn't help at all. 
Overall, I think Rogue Genesia has some solid concepts that could mean success for it in the future, but right now it's too early in its early access period to tell, and I think it needs a major combat overhaul if it wants to be competitive. Just based off progression alone, I'm okay with recommending this to you, but only if you like the survival-like genre. If you're on the fence, wait until it's fully released.